Zoom to hold classes or even stream this talk in no online bank. That would be the world we'd be living in without secure cryptography. Cryptography, the study of securing and keeping information hidden, is a fundamental backbone of the entirety of communications, and without it, the internet would simply cease to exist, as any private information would be public, and any message sent over any electronic medium could be edited or even read before reaching the receiver. Even with all these advances that have happened in the age of the internet because of cryptography, there are still a few flaws in modern cryptography, specifically its lack of malleability. And that's where homomorphic encryption comes in, but we'll discuss why that's super important a bit later in the talk. Before we get to there, why are we even talking about this? When does a high schooler start getting interested about cryptography of all things? For me, this originally stemmed from my interest in computer science, which allowed me to firstly look at the systems that were already in place and try and understand the mathematical backings behind them, but it also gave me just background knowledge in the field of cryptography and sparked my interest for it. This almost formed the search for me in this, and I think the most important search is that for finding solutions to problems that you find in your lives, because that's really how humanity will advance, how humanity goes forward as a species, everyone working together to find solutions to individual problems that they find. But what is homomorphic encryption, and what are some of the uses, specifically what are some of the uses that you fi it finds in the real world? The first example that we're looking at is something called online elections, which haven't seen complete adoption in like the United States, specifically seen adoption in other nations, but you can also see it as locally as with the student council elections that occurred this year. With these online elections, you see a security flaw, because once you have all the encrypted tallied votes, no, sorry, not the tally votes, just the encrypted individual votes of all the people, you run into problems, you want to tally all these votes to see who actually won the election. But the most obvious solution to do this is just decrypting all the individual votes and then just adding them together, but this is quite insecure. Firstly, you get to read every single vote, which completely undermines the anonymity of the election. But secondly, it's very easy to change the votes once you can see each of them in plain text. Homomorphic encryption is able to solve for this by allowing direct computation on this encrypted data, where you're allowed to add up all of the votes and get these sum tallies without actually looking at any individual vote. For the second more relevant example to my research, we're going to be looking at genetics, specifically just biology and genetics in general. And it's estimated in the next decade or two that a large portion of humanity, a large fraction of humanity, will have their entire genome sequence. And this will allow for advances in fields such as biology, where we're looking at mutations in human, humans, epidemiology, where we're looking at viruses and how they impact humans, and also human history, as we're able to see where we came from as a species and across many different groups around the world. But again, we have another security risk, because we don't really want to be giving our entire to genomic codes to people, because it's really personal information. It forms this sort of biological fingerprint, where you can see information about like mutations and diseases one might have. You can also see very sensitive social markers that are present in people's genomes. And this information should be kept reasonably or at least private. But we still want to be able to do some sort of computation on these long strings. We want to be able to look through this data and search for things. Because, for example, say we're sending someone's genome to a lab to find if they have a specific mutation. We don't want that lab to know everything about the person, but we still want the lab to be able to figure out if the person has the genetic ailment or disease in, in effect. And we can also see how homomorphic encryption, specifically the method I made, is allowing us to perform string search on these encrypted strings, where we have these like long strings of just tons of genomic information, and we can just query for this specific subset or the specific string that um, corresponds to, say, a, what's it called, a, a mutation or anything of the sort without actually knowing the entirety of the data. And homomorphic encryption also solves for this, but let's look at what are the kind of homomorphic encryption schemes that are at play at the moment, and also why should I care about this in general. So homomorphic encryption breaks down into three main components. Firstly, is like partially homomorphic encryption, which is sort of where you can do infinitely many computations on the data, but you can only do like a subset. Say you can only add to the data. Then you have some homomorphic encryptions where you can do anything you want to, but you can only do it for a set number of times before it just becomes too expensive computationally. And then finally, on top of that, you get kind of the holy grail of homomorphic encryption, which is fully homomorphic. 
And this is where you can compute as much as you want on the data, and you can do it infinitely many times. And this is really, really cool because it's sort of like if you handed me a number and on a piece of paper, and without ever reading the number, I was able to hand you a piece, another piece of paper that says that number multiplied by 2. That sounds like magic, but with homomorphic encryption, it's actually trivial to do. So, what is the method that I specifically proposed? It is a method of chaining these partially homomorphic encryption schemes together to create a fully homomorphic scheme, which is specifically optimized for this task of doing these genome searches through the entire sequence. And it uses something called the rapid Harp string search algorithm, which, long story short, allows you to do anything you want with these strings and search these strings for specific subsets without actually knowing the entirety of the target string. And my method was able to compute this much faster than anything that was currently available and also kept the data secure. But why, again, I might have referenced this a couple times already, but why are you listening to this? Why should you care? Why have you spent the last nine odd minutes of your life here talking, listening to me talking about this? I don't want this talk just to be, oh, I did something cool once. I was able to solve this niche problem, come up with an even more niche solution. I want this to serve a few more things. Firstly, I want this to inspire all of you to look at problems in your own lives and do this kind of research and try to figure out these solutions. Because if I can do it, I know that any of you and all of you can find problems that are very important and significant to you and then find solutions to these problems. And that process of research is and the search that we're talking about, the search that I find that's most important. It's the search that's embarked by scientists and mathematicians a lot across the world where they're looking for solutions to problems that they each individually find, find important. And I think that this talk, I really wanted it, and I hope that it did, inspire all of you to find problems in your life, whether anything, it could be anything, it doesn't have to be in the science or the mathematics, it could just be anything that you find interesting or you find problem, a problem in your life, and just to search for a solution to the problem, as many of the talks here are today. And I think that my journey through homomorphic encryption and finding this new encryption standard hopefully will be to push you a little bit on your way and serve as a small bit of inspiration.